Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Beyond Interactive podcast with Pop Shop. We're on episode two today. Um, my name is Dahlia Lopez, and we have our CEO, Pop Shop Aton McGee, here with us again. Hi, Aton. Hi, good to be here again. Good morning, everybody. Yes, and we're very excited for today's episode because we have a special guest, Mr. Mel White, um, VP of Marketing and Business Development for Classic Exhibits. Hello, Mel. Hello. Good morning. All righty. So to start off this podcast, Mel, can you just give like a quick um, description of what Classic Exhibits does? Yeah, happy to. We are we're, we're kind of in an, an odd duck within the exhibit industry. We are a private label designer and builder of exhibits. Um, and we work through a vast distributor network of about 200 distributors. But basically, um, I always describe to people, if you go into the grocery store and you buy a can of the store brand green beans, well, the store is not you know, producing those green beans. Another manufacturer does it. We are that manufacturer for the exhibit industry. Um, uh, many of the folks who buy exhibits out there through their local distributor are actually buying classic exhibits products. All righty, Mel. So with the relationship between Pop Shop and classic exhibits, when did that start? Was that the beginning of this year? Did we have um, relationships in 2022? <sighs> It's been about a year. I think we started talking about a year ago. And that relationship, what we do is one of the things that we have on our site is called something called Exhibit Design Search. And Exhibit Design Search is kind of a one-stop shop for exhibits and exhibit-related products um, that our distributors can go to with their, their clients and look for things, um, look for exhibit-related um, items. Uh, one of the things on Exhibit Design Search that's important is that um, we describe to people, while we make a vast array of displays, we don't really make every single thing that an end user or an exhibitor would need at a trade show. We don't right. do uh, we don't do flooring, we don't do um, traditional banner stands, and we don't really do things like interactive displays and those kind of items. So we developed a relationship with Pop Shop so that we could put their products or they could put their products on exhibit design search in our network and uh, be able to showcase those products um, to our customers. Right. right. Yeah, I just pulled up that quick video of mm -hmm. the exhibit design search on your website and there's so many options and different cool things that I feel like you don't really see that often. So I think that's yeah. pretty cool. Pretty cool. I would say also part of the relationship that um, you know, the, the type of partners that uh, Classics have, when they come to us, it's not the end client. The end client does not know really what they're looking for. They're looking for ideas and, and, you know, so it's much easier when one of the Classic partners comes to us. They know the industry. They know the logistics part. They know all the ins and outs uh, versus the end client who has no clue really on how to uh, go about things. And then the transition from uh, non-digital uh, to digital, it, it makes it easier. I mean, you can wow a partner by just adding a screen and creating a, a meaningful software, but they really know what they're looking for. Um, in, in some parts, I've, have, I've had conversations with some of the partners uh, that says, look, we can go and get a screen. It's not about that. It's what the screen can do and the software, the added value. And uh, for that, we really appreciate the relationship uh, with Classic. Because we do have other partners, but when those partners, partners come by, it, it's a completely different experience. And that is educated. And I think uh, part of it, the EDS uh, does a lot of, uh, uh, adds a lot of value because they know what they're looking for. They have an idea. So we're just plugging in the missing parts, which takes another 10, 20% of their project versus the whole thing. Yeah, Ethan, one of the things that really helps us, and it's really the benefit because our distributor network is so vast, it allows us to kind of um, tap into that network or that larger network and be able to determine what's how the industry is evolving and the kind of things that they need. And it was clear, it's been clear for a couple of years that there is a certain gap in knowledge as far as LED technology, as far as touch screens, as far as interactive displays. Um, our partners, our distributors want to know more about it, but because they're in Houston or LA or Denver or wherever, um, they then they use our network to increase their knowledge 
um, of the products that they need out there. And it, and working with PopCap has been very, very beneficial for that relationship and for that knowledge and education. Yeah, I, I wanted to, you know, jumping into that, kind of backstepping of what's happening in the industry, because I always like to hear from the back of the house, uh, someone who's in the industry, what we've been going through is a semi you know, growth and, and madness. We all know how this year started. And the signs were there last year at the end of the year, right? We all knew it was going to be a, a, a back to normal year. But I think it's even more than that, if you ask me. It's the back to normal plus the excessive budgets that were there because of COVID now are being placed. And and I wonder what your uh, experience has been like in the, in the since the beginning of the year. Um, if you could share, that would be great. It, it honestly, it's been the wild, wild west. It's been nuts since folks started coming back to trade shows and started tapping into it. Um, and it's really there's been a growth in two areas. It's not only the growth within custom um, and the purchase side, but there has been a, been a tremendous activity and interest in rentals, much more so than even before COVID. Uh, people are know they want to go back to trade shows. They don't know exactly what they want. So they're much more interested in, in trying rentals and seeing what will work for them kind of long term, maybe before uh, um, going into a purchase. But yeah, um, both those two elements. I mean, we've been we've been busier post COVID and then we were pre COVID and we were we were rocking and rolling pre COVID. But it's been it's been crazy. You're right. Um, one of the things that we had to uh, endure was the scaling of labor, which is short. I mean, everyone's experienced the same challenges. Yeah. Um, and, and the benefit of, of relationship uh, like we have with uh, classic uh, exhibits is the fact that it, it takes a lot of the discovery and finding when you deal with the partners. Um, it takes a lot of resources off the plate. Um, one example I had, I was speaking to a partner, and you know, when you speak to the end client, you're trying to show them how an LED uh, wall will work. Even how simple things, how it would connect to the ma be matrix, or you know, when you speak to a partner, mm -hmm. they know they they know uh, the, the 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 that part, which a on site a day of installation saves you on labor, saves you on time. So these are the small things that add up into us being able to provide more services, more installations. I think we started the year so far, we've had about uh, 380 uh, projects. Mm -hmm. And um, as you know, Mel, uh, we, we work with exhibitors, but we also work with organizers. <clears throat> so when it's 380 exhibitors, that, that's you know manageable. But sometimes when you work with organizers, one organizer can be a whole show. So um, we do appreciate, and I can tell from the conversation with partners that they appreciate also our knowledge when they come to us. And I think it goes both ways. Um, um, I wanted to know from a digital um, add-on to your designs, where do you think this thing, the digital can, can where can it push the envelope in, in the upcoming year and next year? Uh, especially we see a lot of AI coming into play, chat GPT. Mm -hmm is making an impact on, on any industry, let alone the, the, our industry. I wanted to see how you see if the digital can impact your designs on, uh, on the different boots and what it would look like. All right, that's a great question. Um, one of the things, the reality is our industry is sometimes a slow to change. It's sometimes slow to accept new technology. I've learned that having been in the industry for over 20 years is, but once they grasp it, once they accept it, then it becomes widespread very quickly. And I'll use the example of a non-digital um, technology and that's fabric graphics. So fabric graphics, six, seven, eight years ago, and really SEG, that form of graphics, it took a little while. It was popular in Europe. It was not as popular here. But once people finally understood the benefit of SEG and fabric graphics, then it seemed like everybody wanted and everyone kind of grasped it. Um, I think the same thing is happening with digital. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve and, and an expense um, portion of it as far as the cost of digital. But and And as a result, folks are a little... Um, cautious about jumping into the, the digital world. I mean, they'll do it 
they've been doing it a little bit in the past by creating videos. I mean, every, I mean, let's face it, almost every booth now has a monitor in the booth. I and mean, you have to have content for that monitor or that display out there. So people are approaching that portion of it eagerly. The next step is really, I think, and is going into more of the LED tiles, the interactive, the, um, the, 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 the way stations, those kind of things. Once they feel comfortable with the actual content, then I think there's going to be a lot more acceptance, and that's going to push us to design more of those within the booth itself. Right now, it's more, there's, we, we're showing some LED tiles within the booth. We're showing a lot of monitors. And then our distributors are pushing us or nudging us um, into adding uh, adding kind of touch screen, kind of those towers that you guys show into the booth themselves. But it's coming um, as as distributors feel comfortable and that they can then share that technology with their client, they're going to start pushing it. But they have to get to the point where they're really comfortable talking about it and they're not stumbling through it. And you know, you made a great point about budgets as a whole. Um, I think we all know the challenges of the financial markets and what impact it could potentially have on the trade show industry, um, you know, where budgets could tie up, you know, especially for SaaS companies that are a big portion of our portfolio. I think 35% of our exhibitors are SaaS and software companies that are impacted by the changes in the global financial world. So. Um, one of the things I loved, um, and I think I shared it with you uh, a few days ago, that I have a friend of mine that we, you know, he asked me for a couple of kiosks for a 10 by 10. It was a New York bill show. And um, I said, let me help you and try to put a design together. And uh, I think he reached out before he came to me, he reached out to about three different exhibit houses. And they were not, I wouldn't say they were not interested in a 10 by 10 work. It's just not their priority right now, uh, being so busy. Um, and he was looking something for something affordable, something that can combine digital. And I said, you know, you got to go call Kevin uh, uh, from a classic and, and see what they have. And and he did, and I think the results uh, were great. Dada will show that in a second. Um, not only the, the the booth looks great, I think one of the things that uh, really comes out is the digital and the design combo in this booth um you, you know some might say two kiosks were overkill uh, mm -hmm. but they were really busy they used these kiosks as uh demo stations uh, i think they collected over 800 leads using the kiosk um you know they had a staff of four people constantly using them so i think that the digital here was very complementary to the 10 by 10 design and very cost effective. You know, some say, oh, we got 10 by 10, I don't want to break the budget. This is a great example of how you can keep a budget, uh, but still look very uh, uh, attractive. Um, you know, the, the other advantage they had is that they were the only ones that this small show with interactive kiosk. As you said, people are still getting uh, 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 acclimated to the idea of, of more interactive. Um, and obviously, we have the, the screen in the background, which was also a branding uh, uh, marketing uh, screen, but I thought from affordability and budget, you, uh, your system, your platform has everything for everyone, uh, not just the, the big companies that are looking for a, a wow. I think uh, that's a great testament to your services that anyone can come and, and create a, a, a booth like this that looks digital and uh, very attractive. And that was a great photo, Etan. The the background, obviously your kiosk on the front, but in the background, that was one of our portable systems, the, the Symphony, um, with a very, if you look at that, it's got the kind of curve back there. You're seeing a lot of that. that that's a great example within the portable world of what you can get now within systems. Um, folks out there who have bought portable systems in the past and they kind of associate them with kind of rectilinear kind of boring kind of junky looking displays out there um this is this is the future this is where this is a, right now this is our most popular portable product um it's a modular system you can go from a 10 by 10 to a 10 by 20. there are squares rectangle curves um, all a whole variety of items in there. And the nice thing is you'll notice that there is a monitor on the background and that's a real difficult challenge for a portable display. But that system, because it uses the engineered aluminum extrusion, is strong enough to support that monitor. And I love the balance and the look in there that they've got the monitor that's more passive in the background and then the interactive kiosk out front. 
And I, I would say I, I was there when they backed it up. Every booth around them was shocked that this whole thing was two cases for the display, one case for the kiosks, and it's going to the next show, right? Um, the booth next door, I believe, uh, already contacted Classic because uh, they, 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 they couldn't believe, you know, logistics is big, we know. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the cost on logistics and labor are just going to keep going up this year, yep. and next year. So the ability to fold this thing into two cases or rolling uh, and, and ship it via UPS, you don't even need freight for that, um, is a big advantage for 10 by 10. Companies are trying to get into the traditional world. But I did also like about this design that if they went to a 10 by 20, all they would have to do is duplicate the same thing and get yes. it set and, and, and the kiosk just spread out. Um, so I thought it was a great uh, solution, and, and like I said, affordable. I think they had it within 10, 14 days, which was incredible. Um, mm-hmm. So everyone was happy. One of the things that I, I do see, uh, and I, I wanted to see if, if, you're, if you share the same sentiment, um, with the growth of digital, I feel like furniture and things in the middle of the booth are, are kind of moving to the side. It's more becoming more digital world where uh, the end clients and even the partners believe that there's a better ROI on, on, on the digital. I, I love the combination of both, uh, but I, I've seen digital moving to moving out, you know, the furniture out a little bit from the center, not the uh, outskirt. I want uh, to have you share your, your, your thoughts about the whole uh, movement there. I have really strong opinions about rental furniture and about furniture in the booth. Um, Historically, for many, many many years, uh, exhibit consultants would tell you not to put furniture in your booth because if you put furniture in your booth, then the the staff would sit down. They would not engage with clients that it was was a a no-no. It was the same like don't eat in the booth, don't have furniture in the booth, don't do those things. That has really changed, I think, within the last five or six years because there's there's more of a sense that you want you want um, attendees to come into your booth you want them to relax you want them to sit down um, have a longer conversation even the addition of things like wireless chargers um, so people can charge their phone to do all of that the that whole experience of furniture and the interactive adding the kiosk what you're doing is you're trying to engage people to linger within your booth um, the clients so that you're you're actually have enough time to determine exactly what their needs are, what their wants are, that it becomes a very warm um, lead post show, as opposed to handing off, you know, a uh, a scan of someone and then the sales department is reaching out to them and they don't really have any information. That really allows them to have a much more meaningful experience with the client. And the the thing that I loved about the booth that you guys showed before is is it's doing a couple things that's blending really well is that there is, um, a trade show is not a passive um, experience. And while we're all comfortable with the world of digital as consumers, it that's really tends to be kind of passive. And how do you translate that passive element of watching a TV or watching an element and make it interactive and make it so that there is um, there is engagement there? And that particular booth, yes, it did have the monitor in the back, but it had your kiosk there. So it translated both that, that passive entertainment engagement so that people were interactive. That's really, that's a tough transition for many exhibitors right now. They want their booth to be interactive, but they don't know how to do it. And things like a ready-made solution like a kiosk like that, like that allow them to do it. Uh, some will say, okay, I need to have a game or I need to have some kind of contest and those were all great those were all fun to have in there but anything that's interactive will allow you to have as i said a longer more meaningful conversation with the attendee and and follow up to your point about the games and 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 the activation uh, i feel like when we do a booth and we have those uh we've had the matching game which is a big hit Mm -hmm. one of the reasons is a competition and people want to beat each other's scores but for the exhibitor, one of the values of that is the fact that the attendee keeps coming back to the booth and spending yeah. more time. Now, when they're spending more time and they return, you, like you said, you have to evaluate if this is a good candidate for you to follow up. Uh, I think the furniture do have a place, uh, especially if you add the digital values like chargers or maybe 
some screens and whatnot for your branding, but you do need a place to, to have them sit and relax and feel more comfortable. The longer the conversation is, we, we have a, a, a mini study on that. The longer the conversation, the more comfortable the conversation, it's like a club, you know, when people look at your booth, say, oh, you know, this booth is busy. People are hanging out there all the time. I'm gonna go check it out. So it has an impact on other attendees. Um, so, and, and I'm gonna transition a little bit from that point to our interactive games um, and, and activations. When I go into EDS and I look at some of the designs and I speak to the partners, one of the things that we do at Pop Shop is we try to complement our activation widget software into the mm -hmm. whole theme of the design. Uh, yes. kind of tie it up together. And um, I've had several conversations when I, I looked at the designs that the partner chose and I said, well, we should do this. And it's like, well, it's a great idea. And, you know, it, it just a, a perfect marriage. Sometimes you just look at the overall vibe. Uh, and I think uh, to your point, that's why that booth works as a path into the overall design as interactive uh, displays. Um, I wanted to to ask the, you know, the, the kind of the million dollar question in the industry. Um, so as, as partners expand their reach into different, uh, tar different targets and different shows and, 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 and this thing just scales up and grows, one of the things we've done, we added, uh, new products, right? We, we introduced new products, whether it's in the LED arenas, interactive, what is classic, uh, future product look like? If you can give us a glimpse without uh, sharing any secrets, what does the next year, uh, year and a half look like uh, for classic in the industry? Well, I think part of it is there, I think if you've walked the show, you've seen that there is, there continues to be a growth within uh, backlighting with backlit exhibits. Um, there, you have to do those backlit exhibits and you have to do it. I think one of the things that we're working on is making that even easier, being able to backlight um, smaller displays like 10 by 10s and make that um, fairly simple for clients to make that happen. Uh, so we're working on that. We're doing a lot of R&D on some backlighting solutions. The other thing is to continue designing uh, um, designing exhibits that have, as you said, Etan, more kind of digital experiences, whether it's LED walls or it's monitors. I, I, I have to tell you, one of the things that I've, I told folks a couple of years ago and I've been saying for the last few years is my biggest fear, and I'll probably be retired before that ever happens. One of my biggest fears is that at some point for classic exhibits that you'll walk a trade show and every single 10 foot booth will simply be a, a 10 foot video wall in the back wall. So. There's, so there's no structure. It's just a video wall back there. But, you know, in a sense, that can be extraordinarily effective if the content's well and the content is engaging within it and it has interactive, it has touchscreen, it has all that. Um, at some point, we may be, we, the, the digital portion of the industry, if it really dominates, may um, pose a, a challenge to folks like us who are designing exhibits. But I think that's, it's great if that can happen out there, but it, yes. It is and part of that part of that challenge that I'm going to go into is the the rental world there too the rental world um, uh, putting more of that digital being able to change things up from show to show and have that happen um, I I th we're seeing a lot of that and I think that's just will just going to continue to grow as our distributors and their clients feel more comfortable with it because right now it's all about comfort level um, knowledge and, and being comfortable with those that technology. Yeah, I got to tell you, I think there is something about um, where the future holds with LEDs and, and replacing backlights. I think LEDs are becoming more flex LEDs. So yeah, I really see uh, in, in a few years, you'll be able to roll an LED into a case and you can yeah. get it out um, and, and, and the content. But I do see uh, classic uh, pivoting, you know, because mm -hmm. yeah. what makes you special is the design ability. So you could still build content and design and, and attachment to the LED. Uh, whenever I see an LED, and we do that uh, for our, some of our clients, just a background LED, yeah, it's good, it's interactive, it's it's nice, but it's missing some elements of the character mm -hmm. of the brand. And I, and I yeah. say that all the time. So I do think that uh, Classic will pivot in that arena. Uh, you've done it, uh, you mentioned the backlights and the fabric over the years. It's just another way to pivot and add more services um, I will uh, end by saying that 
um, for every transition in the industry, if you can kind of uh, pivot in a way, we certainly mm -hmm. during COVID, that's how we got into the trade show world. We were not a trade show company. We were more like hospitality, healthcare. So, you know, something happened. We had to transition. I think that will happen in general in our industry. It will keep evolving. Um, one of the things I wanted to finish with is uh, Exhibit Alive is coming soon in April in Louisville. Uh, I know uh, uh, Classic will be there. We will be there. Uh, any expectations and uh, things you're looking to see at Exhibit Alive from uh, our colleagues and partners in the industry? Well, I mean, you mentioned digital. I think we'll see a lot more of that this year than we've seen in years past. And um, that's the perfect opportunity for all of us, in particular, our distributors to feel more comfortable with it and to start incorporating it into their, their sales pitch. Uh, that's really the big thing. I'm less um, concerned about um, hardware. Um, the hardware is pretty static out there right now, but the, the digital portion of the industry is just exploding. Agreed. And I think it's going to be, um, we were there for Expo Expo in Louisville. And at first I had my reserv reservation from the location. But once I got to Louisville, I was like, this is a perfect spot. You know, it's hard to get to, but once you're there, it's very accessible. And I think it's going to be a great show. Uh, we look forward to seeing you and your team there and uh, to having a great show. And uh, we want to thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, uh, well, thank you. Um, Pop Shop has been a great partner for uh, classic exhibits, and we appreciate um, your knowledge and the information and everything that you share with our distributor network. It's really meaningful and valuable. Thank you so much. And thank you, before we end, guys, before we end, I want to do a quick plug. Um, we do have up in the left hand corner just a QR code. If you guys want to learn more, you can visit the classic exhibits website. Um, I will also pull up the Pop Shop one. If you guys want to learn more, go ahead and take a picture of that and follow our social medias in the bottom corner. Um, and yeah, coming back to Exhibit Our Live, I'll pull up this picture just so everyone can see booth numbers. We would love for you guys to stop by our booths. Let me see. Classic Exhibits is booth 1119 and we will be at booth 417.